Hey there, Internet. I'm Kevin Coons. I'm here with my good friend and filmmaker, Christopher Coppola. Hello. We're doing a review talking about the Insta360 Pro 2, which does 8K 3D 360. Well, let me set the stage a little bit here, if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Kevin uh, is an expert. Um, he's done a lot of testing of equipment with several companies, <laughs> highly respected. And you'll be teaching at the San Francisco Art Institute uh, next spring. Yes. Uh, and uh, to me, what I like about this, you're in the Diego Rivera Gallery, yep. great mural right here, here at the San Francisco Art Institute, is that artists like to try different things, push the envelope. Mm -hmm. And so they're very excited about cameras like the Insta360 8K because it allows them to try new things. Um, I got involved with this when I was working with Intel to do a 8K uh, artificial intelligence uh, project, create a project with art students. We were kind of making uh, what I like to call 8K AI pop movie, Warhol movies, that we put up on an 8K monitor for people to see. Mr. Kuntz was also there, and uh, uh, he told me that uh, there was a lot of stuff going on with 180 and 360, and it just so happened that Koi of Intel, who's a friend, and Mike Genomenico and Roy Hill of Intel, happened to get the 8K Insta360. They bought one. And thinking about maybe doing some projects with my students. But um, we did, you know, some testing with it. We went out to the family property and shot some stuff in the vineyards. It was fun. It looked really good. What I liked about it, too, is that because it's 8K, we could push in and not lose yeah. any resolution whatsoever. So to start out with, this camera not only can do the 8K 3D 360 at 30 frames per second, if you put it at 6K res, you can actually get 60 frames per second 3D 360. Wow. which is really good for when you're trying to capture a 3D image to be able to have that higher frame rate. Things don't have that motion blur and that drop off. The more resolution, I mean, first of all, it's a nice compact size. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's super light. Yeah. We were able to just really run and gun with this. Yeah, and yeah. It, just, it felt like, you know, we, the concept that we had was a silent movie piece that we shot with Christopher's son, Bailey. And it's very much like a German expressionistic comedy sort of thing where it's just running around this vineyard, yeah. stealing a bottle of wine. And for me, we were able to improvise and just experiment and just take the camera and put it in different places, put it in low light environments and still be able to capture yeah, daylight, the daylight, daylight, uh, mm -hmm. then a very subtle lighting inside the winery. Exactly. Like it, uh, and it, 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 it held up. up. It, it held really up. held up and we didn't have to do a lot of adjusting. It was really run and gun and felt very like eight millimeter, just kind of like yeah. having having fun with like it. Like a home movie. Exactly. And, and on other previous cameras that are, you know, shooting this type of res, it feels a lot more um, cumbersome and in many ways a, little, a lot more difficult to connect with Wi-Fi. We were using an iPad with this the whole time. Yeah. It didn't have any connectivity issues. I was able to see playback or yes. watch playback of it. And it was really great um, to be able to just have something small and compact that we had fun with. Well, one of the things also that I, I'm very interested in is narrative, uh, you know, I make uh, narrative films, uh, feature films. And I'm also <clears throat> very interested in telling stories in the 360 mode with actors. You know, obviously you have situations where you're going to have lights in the shot, mm -hmm. but the more resolution you have, the easier it is to remove those things. Yeah. Hey, this is the president of our school, this Mr. Gordon Knox. Hard to find around here. <laughs> I want a sabbatical. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's fine. Very nice to Gordon meet you. He's going to be teaching uh, a class in the spring all on 360. And oh, right. And this is an Insta360 8K, which is pretty advanced for its size. And we did some tests that they now have an 11K Titan. And so we're discussing to get one for the school so students can kind of break it, push the end. I mean, not really break but break the yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So narrative, and again, when I say narrative in yeah. this context, I mean uh, using actors yeah, and, yeah. and storytelling. Um, I, the more resolution I have, the more I can do with coverage. Yeah, I agree. And, and I need that to be able to tell the stories. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I can't go at it in the same way you would with non-360. Yeah. Because the blocking's different. But I find it very exciting. W what's the sound on this? Is it enough just to use the sound on the camera? It has four mics in it that can do 360 ambisonic sound. 
So it's really state of the art in terms of the audio as well, which is why they had to take that fan down so much. Well, the reason why I ask is sometimes, you know, a student is on the go when we're talking gorilla, like you said, but even gorilla filmmaking has some beautiful moments. The way it does this incredible sunrise and the water is just right and they don't have microphones, they always want to get the camera out there. That's the real, you know, feeling. Is the sound going to be good enough in the mix to make it work? Exactly. Another nice feature is they actually put a little uh, tripod thread at the top. So you could put like a zoom mic on top that also does 360 and probably would get you, you know, maybe a little bit better because that mic has four. So you can combine them both together and then you'd have eight eight channels of audio, which is really great. With any camera like this that is shooting such high res, there's a lot of fans going on in there. Compared with the first model, the Pro 1, it was very soft in terms of the fan noise. I could barely hear it. Yeah. But in any case, with a huge camera like this, I always recommend miking, yeah, yeah, like yeah. with lavaliers or just you know you could hide like a shotgun mic somewhere. Yeah, like, that's what you have to do. Or you hide the little but, like uh, roadies and things like that around different places. But but that's what interests me uh, in this. And then eventually we were talking about projectors oh, in yeah. 360, putting them in a room. There is one already, which I want to get some information on. But uh, all that is what interests me. So I really am working closely with Kevin and filmmakers, young student filmmakers. Because that is the future, right? This is the future, and, and they're the future. They're the new filmmakers. So as much as we can support uh, you know, these young filmmakers and artists, the better. Other nice features about this, it has nine axis stabilization. So we did one shot where we're walking through the yeah. field. Yeah. We didn't end up using it in our final cut, but I like doing that as a yeah. test. I like and the one where my son is uh, running with it inside the winery, but we didn't use that one either. We kept it simple, yeah. but that one looked pretty good. It, it held up all of the handheld things were pretty good and could be balanced out later in post. Yeah. Is this a 360 going to start having a software that is really kind of sophist- way sophisticated professionally? for the kind of stuff that a professional filmmaker like myself would need. I'm happy you asked me about the software because what's a nice thing that they did with this camera is they started to work with Adobe to try and mainstream this so you can do automatic stitching in Adobe and be able to see rough cuts and dailies of what your footage is. So that's why I'm wearing my Adobe Immersive shirt today is to to give Adobe a little shout out for the work they've done with Insta360 to make this really easy for editors and for people. We're just trying to take all of the hassle of post-production out of these high-res things. Now, that being said, I had a little pushback on my machine. It was running and processing the things a little slow. When we took it over to Christopher's uh, computer, which is an Intel machine, it was processing it a lot faster. We should say that Christopher's machine, it is it's, Intel. It's, it's San Francisco it, Art, Art Institute. Institute. Intel's been very supportive of what I do with young filmmakers for the, since 2006. So they have set up an 8K high-speed desktop uh, to experiment with all this stuff. So thank you, uh, Roy, Mike Genomedico, uh, Coy, for being engaged with me. Thanks. It certainly made the process a lot easier editing on that Intel machine than my computer at home, right. even though it is a pretty fast desktop yeah. that I souped out. I, yeah. was, I was very surprised. We shot in 3D 8K. If we shot in monoscopic 8K resolution, we'd be able to put it in HDR mode, which would be able to get better low light and just be able to shoot even better those low light scenes in front of Cafe Zoetrope, thinking of specifically, you'd be able to see so much more detail in the things in the distance with the cars. So So the camera's equipped uh, like a really great weapon to do many different things. Exactly, it's great for if you want to do it in VR or if you want to make just a standard movie with this. It has lots of utility. Um, I'm interested to see with the 11K Titan how much more difficult the workflow will be, but I'm, sh- I'm up for the challenge of it. And uh, when you're on a tight budget and you have like a movie star that wants a million dollars a day, you know, or, or you know, and, but, or maybe by the hour so you can get away with paying someone 500000 <laughs> as the lead movie star, uh, yeah, here's 500000 for two hours of work. I mean, who's going to say no to that, right? So that's the really the great thing, besides what you can do with effects, visual effects, uh, with 8K uh, and 11K, is the amount of coverage that you can do in post to save time. 
Yeah, it's been a real improvement since version one, even in terms of the antennas, being able to get the signal easier. You can also use an iPhone to connect with this, so you don't need yeah. to use an iPad. Thank you so much, Michael at Insta360, for also supporting this project. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get that Titan 11K, I'm gonna cross my fingers on it. Um, but don't forget, uh, Kevin is teaching in the spring. The more yeah. equipment he has to work with the students, uh, the more knowledge and information Insta360 will get. Perfect. I am the chair of the film program here, but I'm on sabbatical to make a movie. Uh, but I'll be back in the fall. And the, movie, the movie is also going to feature virtual reality, yeah. but we can't talk too much yeah. about that right now. That's that's. It's under wraps. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you again for doing this review with me, allowing me access to this, and, and have a lot of fun in the yeah. winery. Yeah. Um, we're going to post the video online soon, our experiment. I don't know where we're going to post it, maybe on Intel's YouTube. Or yeah, we'll see. We've got some certain YouTube. things we, we mm -hmm. can't show mm -hmm. and can show. You can go to Christopher R. Coppola uh, Facebook. That's Christopher so there's two R's, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R-R, Coppola, C-O-P-P-O-L-A. I'm going to link to you in the description. I hope I earned your subscription today. If you like this video, give it a like. Hit that notification button to stay up to date on our latest videos. Write a comment if you have any questions about this camera. We'll write back on there and give you our feedback on it. And have a great day. Yeah. Peace. Peace.